Assalamu alaikum. I welcome all of you to a lecture on advanced mass spectrometry. It's in fact the third lecture. Today we will be discussing electron ionization. Or simply called EI. So today we will be discussing EI. EI or electron ionization, it is also called, uh, it is uh, a hard ionization technique. Hard, uh, we will be discussing it in the ionization right now. The other thing is that its uh, instrumentation is quite simple. And the third thing is, as uh, uh, I uh, already mentioned in previous uh, lecture, that uh, mass spectrometry is most uh, is mostly is most sensitive among the other spectroscopic techniques. So sensitivity means that it utilizes very small amount of analyte for detection and analysis. So electron ionization is one of the most simple among the other. Uh, mass spectrometric technique so it is even most uh, sensitive than its other counterparts or its other fellows sensitive means that it utilizes even below nanograms of a compound or analyte uh, in order to uh, uh, for analysis and it can detect and it can even analyze below nanogram scale. The third thing which makes uh, this electron ionization very much important is that, that uh, its theoretical knowledge is available. It's, uh, it has a strong theoretical backing. as it has a strong theoretical foundation. What does this mean? It means that the mass spectrometry is understood very much well because uh, uh, it, uh, the processes occur in the mass spectrometry, its mechanisms or other things are very much understood because of a large number of work is done on ionization mechanism. and uh, that how ionization occurs and the other thing is fragmentation that how the fragmentations occurs so uh, the the so knowledge for the ionization or the fragmentation mostly for the fragmentation it comes from the solution organic chemistry solution organic chemistry means that the normal organic chemistry can provide uh, very good knowledge to the fragmentation pathway or a little bit to ionization because in normal organic chemistry there, there are things just called uh, carbocate ions carbon with a positive charge on it and a free radical so for uh, hundreds of years uh, those things are familiar to the scientists and they have worked or published a large number of papers on free radical chemistry or carbocate ion chemistry that how they behave, how they react, how they are produced, those two and what are their stability orders and how much uh, they can, st how much functionality can uh, stabilize it. Uh, so this information was previous, is from the previous organic chemistry. From 100 or 150 years back, people knew that what free radical is, what carbocation is. Why I am relating this with the mass spectrometry? Because in the mass spectrometry, these types of the species are produced. A species called as the free radical, which we will be discussing, but it's almost uh, characteristic. Uh, it's almost almost like 
carbocate ion or a free radical its nature is like that it's a dual type of a thing which we'll explain in the ionization section so the mass electron ionization electron ionization is very much important it is the sensitive of all it is uh, number third thing is uh, it is uh, also very much uh, easy to understand and a large number of theory is present so it is backed by a big big theory uh, its mechanisms are uh, understood and other things are also very much understood uh, for, for this uh, electron ionization mass spectrometry so as I compared it to the uh, carbocate ion and carbo uh, in the free radical now another thing which is uh, again very important this electron ionization is also very much linear That how it is a linear um, what is linearity or how it is uh, linear okay linearity means that the response of a machine to uh, a concentration or the concentration versus signals response like this if this is on x-axis you take concentration and signal response could be absorption or something else and uh, here you take a concentration now what linearity mean linearity mean that uh, as you increase the concentration with the same proportion the signal will increase just like if you have concentration of suppose let's see uh, let's say nanograms 1 nanogram, 2 nanogram, 3 nanogram, 4 nanogram, and 5 nanogram, etc., etc., and it's signal response like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. If you have 1 nanogram concentration, its response is like this it gives signal at 1. If you have twice that, if suppose it gives the signals on 2, if it gives, if you have the, an, uh, more concentration, uh, 3 nanogram concentration the machine will give a response at 3 and if you have a 4 ng sample nanogram of sample so its signal response will be almost 4 so this thing is called as this is a bit this thing is linear so this is called linearity and let me compare it with non-linear things sometimes very easily this is response and this is the concentration sometimes if you increase the concentration the response is not very much uh, coherent with the concentration suppose you have one two three four nanogram of the sample and one two three four these one two three four could be absorptions or some current or something else so don't confuse it with something else okay now uh, right now I want to tell you or make you understand that what linearity is suppose it gives us the response at one if the uh, no, nanogram it is one nanogram of sample and it gives uh, uh, one absorption of one signal or one current or something that if you increase it on uh, the concentration to two suppose its response becomes Mm, uh, it should come on two or uh, it should be twice that of the first okay if something is linear suppose it gives us the response like 2.2 so 1.2 uh, 1 or 1.3 now you have you take another sample third and it certainly gives you the response at a little bit uh, it gives you the response at three and if suppose you take a four and again it decreases its response now the signal even the signal was supposed to increase suppose here it is a signal uh, if you, its concentration is one and the concentration two so the two should have uh, double the response of the one okay or 
4 should have at least double that of the 2. But now the response of 1 and 2 is uh, almost not double, uh, it's not double and between 2 and 3 it's something else. Okay, it's not going with the same rate as the concentration goes. And at 4, the thing, it was supposed, it was assumed that it should increase, the signal should increase when the concentration is increased. But now it decreases. On the contrary, it decreases. So this type of the response is non-linear. So the mass EI is uh, very much linear up to very good concentrations and uh, uh, this thing is non-linear so this is called linear and this is non-linear okay now let's move to another thing Let's, uh, let's, let us move to another important thing that what is the basic principle uh, of the mass uh, electron ionization mass spectrometry. So almost all uh, have the same basic principle. Basic principle means that First, you need uh, to isolate a compound. Okay, suppose you have uh, water molecules and you isolate one of the water molecules from it and you just place it on a detector. Okay, and you just uh, get some wet out of it, and that's what my spectrometry does. And it's the basic principle too. But let, uh, let me uh, show you. But how would you isolate a compound? So, for example, there is an easy way to isolate a single compound from the others. It's called boiling. What is boiling? Suppose there are uh, numerous definition, definitions of the boilings, but boilings mean that you separate each molecule from each other, one another, okay? Just like H2O, water molecule, it is liquid because all the uh, hydro, all the H2O's uh, hydrogens are hydrogenate, hydrogen bonding with oxygen, so it becomes a big, big thing or a liquid. So, how do you separate it? Boiling is a very good example or a very big, good solution. So, if this is a container, it has some water into it, so heat it. This is for heat or another candle-like thing. Heat it so it will become a, it, it will start evaporation or it will become a gas. Now what will be that gas? It will be H2O molecule in gaseous form but they are now isolated. So congratulations or well done that the first step is achieved. So you can or we can separate uh, the molecules from each other when you boil them because boi before boiling water molecules were held together with each other but not one thing uh, that the still uh, the H2O has the H2O bonding in, uh, so uh, had the covalent bond, all covalent bond intact that is H O H so it is present in the water like this is the hydrogen bonding with it so, it, there are multiple hydrogen bondings uh, in the water molecules uh, so the, to make it a liquid. So, when you heat it, only these breaks, the hydrogen bonds breaks and the covalent bond remain intact. Intact means that they are not broken and now this H2O molecule, a gaseous H2O molecule is escaped escapes from the container but it is still H2O now and they are as you know that the gas molecules are farther apart from each other or they are separated so the first aim is achieved the basic principle was separate something from a separate single molecule or single atom and then ionize it 
Okay, so we will uh, touch the ionization section uh, in the later lecture, but right now we have uh, achieved uh, one thing that uh, H2O molecule, sorry, that how to separate a molecule. The easy way in the mass, electron ionization mass spectrometry is to first uh, boil the thing and uh, gasify it, so it is separated from each other, okay. Now the separation is done because the gas molecules are farther apart from each other. Now they are not bonding with each other, bonded with each other.